and uh, we're just going to present that idea here, which we've been doing for 15 years here. Uh, it happened when I have around 36 years, and about the seventh year, uh, some things seemed to get clear, and also that which seemed to get clear told me not to move from this point, because if you don't see this point, you're looking from it. You're looking from the effect. Yeah? And it's a tricky one, but I'll do the best I can to share my experience with it and the amount of relief I got when I saw things this way. Yeah? And we're not selling relief. You're, it's available already. I'm just going to tell you how it played out here, sitting here. Yeah? And, uh, and give an idea of what I believe is the exact nature of the wrong. And the important part of its nature is that it's foreign to us. It's not us. It's not a part of us. It's in us, but it's not of us. Yeah. And uh, I will just share what, how I come to that conclusion. And I hope you have a minute or two to entertain the idea, see where it lands. It could uh, change the way you look at things. And, you know, one of the promises that I felt it had a lot to do with fulfilling in the book is that the problem will not exist for you anymore. And it can, you can live a day at a time on that, in that condition. And if you've lived under this problem, that, that possibility is an incredible possibility. That you can, it would not exist for you today. Yeah, that's a huge shift because that monkey was on the back like 24-7, and it was incredibly infecting everything in this life, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, financially, relationships-wise. For that influence, to, to have no influence a day at a time is incredible, completely incredible to me. And I have been living in that relief that the problem doesn't exist as me, for years, years and years and years. Yeah? It doesn't mean, see, my magical idea of if uh, traveling lighter would be everything would go my way. It hasn't expressed that way. What it's allowed to happen is whatever life has in store for me, I have been able to travel lighter through. And as I was talking to my friend earlier, there's a great statement in, in the third step <coughs> where the promises for the they're, they're suggesting these are going to be the effects if you sincerely take this position of relying on something greater than you, or greater than self, really. Yeah? And one of them is you're going to learn that you can face life successfully. Yeah? And successfully on one level to us is not getting triggered and getting loaded or drinking. But in a lot of ways, and that inability to have a viable relationship with another human will change. And now you may be able to share love, have it returned and have it given, yeah? Which that wasn't the case when I was occupied by this thing, yes? You may be able to see things in a more inclusive manner, not black or white. And all these things, all these effects are going to be what show up after the older effects get diminished, yeah? And this is what the program does. The program leads us to a point where we start losing interest in self. That's the point. That's the pivot. If you read page 63, that's the pivot of it. It says, losing interest in self, that's it. Uh, you will now look at life and see what you can contribute to. You will now gain interest in other people. You'll now feel a new power flow in. You'll feel a conscious presence. You'll be able to, you'll <coughs> learn you can face life successfully. It's all pivoted on losing interest in self. Yeah? Because self is seen as the, the exact nature of the law. I, prob I, would, I never checked it out, but I mean in the first 164 pages, I would imagine self is the most used word. Mm -hmm. yeah? And it says, it tells us that any life run on it is going, hardly going to be a success. So it's very important, I feel, to get an idea what self is and what it ain't. Yeah? And we're not talking about ego. We're talking about 
when you feel like you have an ego, that's the sense of self. Yeah? So when there's an ego or something, you come up with a name and now you call something ego, it's the feeling that you have an ego. That sense is the sense of self. That's the bondage point. All right? So we're going to... Because I don't... I, I just did a share five times, you know. I can tell Phyllis's story or Stephen's story. Yeah? But mine hasn't changed. And, my, and the primary point in the story is really where the basis of the relief gets stabilized. And this is the point. I was reading, I was, had the, the great privilege to lead fourth step workshops since I was three years sober. And uh, in San Francisco, I started there, but then I started going every, a lot of places. And of course, the, the fourth step is in the chapter, How It Works, which is self-explanatory, how it works. Yes. The book doesn't have very exotic, esoteric, it's right out there. How it works is in chapter, how it works. So, and it starts around page 63, and it talks a lot about the bondage of self and everything, and then the third step. And it was, was interesting to me to see why, if, if this was your life, then why would you have to make a decision to turn it over? You could just turn it over. But it doesn't say that in the third step. It says uh, you make a decision to turn you, your will and life over to the care of something else other than self. Yeah? Why can't you just do it? Because actually your life is in something else's care, which is self. So self has your life. You don't have the ability. You are in a dilemma of powerlessness. You believe you have your life. You don't. You've been taken over by this parasite. Let's say call it alcoholism. And right now, you cannot turn your life over to something else because it won't let you. It's just that fucking system. It's, it's, it's playing God. So we have to make a decision, hopefully because you're convinced of the futility of how you've been living, and your policies to drinking and your unmanageability is caused by your managing life. Right? Yeah? And you not managing, it's self-management. Self-management constantly is called yours. And the way self feels, you identify with it as yours. They're not, you are not afraid all the time. Self is afraid all the time. You are not your own worst enemy. Self is the enemy. You do not hate yourself. Self hates you. Yeah. This whole idea that you are that which has defeated you is a losing fucking position. All right, so the third step. So I humbly believe why we have to do steps four, nine, four, four through nine, which are the working steps, is to diminish the mental condition because that's the realm of where self plays God. Yeah. As we say, the book says, the problem resides in the mind, and the, the addiction, the self, talks to us as us through thoughts. Yeah? And if you want to just take, just check it out. How many meetings have you gone to? And when I first went to the meetings, immediately I started recognizing shit I hadn't recognized in years, and one of the first things I recognized sitting in the back I felt like I was in a cocoon of terminal uniqueness. I mean, I was encased. I, did, I tr totally believed no one had the thoughts I had. No one felt the way I felt, and no one did the shit I did. Yet, I just listened just to the meeting, the people sharing, and they were sharing their thoughts, their feelings, and their heinous acts, and they sure sounded like my thoughts, my feelings, and my heinous acts, because they're not your thoughts. Something is using those thoughts to get its message across. Alcoholism is talking to us as us. When it says, I may be fucked, it is fucked, but you believe I'm going to be fucked. No. Unless you agree with it, you're that if you agree with it and keep on living life as if yourself, you are going to be fucked. Yeah? And if you have alcoholism, we can tell fortunes. If I meet an active alcoholic, I can tell exactly what's going to happen to them in life. Maybe not the locations and the people, but they're fucked. They are. And they're talking about everything else, and there's this giant shadow of the elephant in the room. They've been taken over by something, you know, like possessed. 
Yes. And that thing isn't letting go. And you're in a dilemma of powerlessness. You can't kick it out. It's like having a tenant you can't kick out of your own house. It's telling it, it's talking to you as if it owns the house. You can't get the fucker out. So we make a decision to turn our will and life over to the care of something greater than so. This is the whole point. Yeah? And the fourth, comp, fourth step is the way we start. Yeah? This is not about a surrender. This is a surrender that's followed by writing. And you do an inventory. And this is how I want to present it. Because I, I humbly believe I've seen tons of people present the fourth step. And I think they're passing on a mistake. I do, humbly. Because if you read it, and I, maybe I, I grew up in America, my thoughts play in English, people talk to me in English, I've read in English, and the way I read the sentence, this is the way I see it. It says on page 64, being convinced, which means to believe with certainty. That's one of the definitions, yeah? And hopefully, your life out there, loaded and everything, has convinced you of something. And what is it that we have hopefully been convinced of? Self, that self, self, manifested in various ways, is what has defeated us. So we're, self is mentioned in the same sentence we're mentioned. We're under the t names us. Self is what has defeated us. Us has not defeated us. You have not defeated you. Something that's in you, seemingly, has defeated you. <coughs> now, it's difficult to see which one is which, because <coughs> the selfing has convinced us that we're the selfing, basically. Yeah? So we need some freaking clarity to recognize what we are and what we're not. Because you're not going to be free as self. You're not. But you can be free from self. Yes, <coughs> definitely. All right? So follow it. English, being convinced, believe with certainty. Self, manifested means to appear or to uh, produce or to show up, manifest, yeah? Manifests in various ways. <clears throat> we are now going to look at its, meaning selves, not you, its common manifestations. Selves, follow it. All the pointing is not at you, it's at self. We're not looking at your manifestations, we're looking at self's manifestations. Read the book, it's English, it's in the big book. <clears throat> okay? If we're convinced of that, let's look at its common manifestations. Which are, what are they? The first one, resentment. Yeah? Now, when you talk to people, how do they talk about a resentment? My resentment. Yes or no? Yes. They talk about my resentment. It goes totally against, if they may be big book thumpers, it's going uh, t totally against what's said in the big book. The big book says, <coughs> resentment is a manifestation of self in one's life. Right there, clear as day. Don't argue with me, it's right there on page 64. Check it out. And fear exactly. Fear is the self is causing the fear, and actually the fear self is causing is produced by mental anxiety. Yeah. The amount of fear we seem to be in every day, you'd have to have, you have to be in the water all day with 30 sharks in there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The head's making shit out of nothing. And it, and the, it could be funny, but it overrides, overrides the present tense state where you can be relieved of the bondage of self, and it overrides it with the act of being bound to self. We're listening to its thoughts as ours, and we're bound to it. Yes? All right. Okay. Resentment is the number one offender. So doesn't it sound like the manifestation that we look at in the inventory is not of us, it's of self? The three manifestations are resentment, fear, and harms done to others in the pursuit of what we want, and we look at the sexual arena to see that, that activity. That's not our activity. The book says we are driven by a hundred feet, a hundred forms of shit. That means you're not the driver. I have not seen, you know, what's his name? Musk says the self-driving car and the person gets killed. There's, there's no, you're not the driver, you're driven. Something is driving us, yeah? 
this is what we're doing. We're just switching drivers. We're trying to lose the, the, lower, the lower power driver and, and then allow the higher power to start to drive us, yeah? And the results are gonna be incredibly different when we're driven. We're both, we're gonna be driven no matter what, yeah? But where we get driven to and how we're treated while we're being driven is gonna be completely different. But you're not gonna be the driver ever. You're gonna be driven. The head's gonna drive you or, or the spirit's gonna drive you. And AA has it, a very simple choice. Perhaps there's a better way. What is it? Trusting the infinite rather than finite self. So if you listen to that statement, the condition we're in is we're trusting finite self. And the condition they're offering is to trust the infinite. Yeah. They're saying as obviously the condition we're in right now mostly is trusting the head and we can have that interest or position changed by this program to trust the infinite. Let's call it spirit. Yeah. That's the whole game. And what does it look like when you trust spirit? You lose interest in self. And then what happens? All these incredible things happen. You feel a new power flow in, conscious presence. You can face life successfully. You feel like you're reborn. Yes. Yeah. Or driven by self, same old fucking same thing. It loves to drive you to a drink because what happens to the alcoholic who calls you after they drink? Very few possibilities are available. Mm. Basically, go to a meeting, yeah? What happens to an alcoholic who calls you before they drink? Lots of possibilities, yeah? When do, when, when do most alcoholics call you after they drink? What's causing that? What's causing the person who's extremely self-centered, like it says in the book, but they don't think so? What's causing that? What's causing people who take inventories on everyone they see quickly, like look at them and blah, 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 yet will kick and scream not to do an inventory for 10 months on the fourth step. But they do inventories, like flash inventories all fucking day. Mm -hmm. They do. You look, oh, I fucking, I know him, I know that. Yeah? But suddenly, when the spotlight's supposed to go on us, <coughs> we'll do anything. Actually, a lot of people leave at the fourth step. Yeah? I humbly believe, this is my, this is how I see it, I believe the parasite does not want you to look at your role in things, because you will see its role in things. <coughs> as long as you're blaming other, others, it's totally hidden. But if you start looking at your behavior and what you had to do with shit, you're going to see self is what has defeated you. You are the defeated. You are not the defeater and the defeated. You are the defeated. There's a different defeater. And the beautiful news is if you're not it, you can be free from it. If you are it, good luck trying to be <coughs> free as it. Because our community itself, it's not in the book, but a community, it was so obvious that they came up with an incredible slogan, and that was, self cannot get out of self. How the hell did that come out? It's not in the book. It came out from tons of people doing just that. They were trying to get out of self as self, and they finally saw the futility to such a level, it became a fucking slogan in our community. Self can't get out of self. So what you're not can't get out of what you're not. The point is, is to see it from what you are and see that it's not you. Now, how are we going to do that? How AA does it is through a spiritual awakening. What triggers that spiritual awakening? F following the first 11 steps. Yeah. It says on having had a spiritual awakening, so they believed, and they actually pretty close, so it happens to a lot of us, that if you did what we do, go where we go, and do the first 11 steps, you would have a spiritual awakening and they believe it would be sufficient to shift the power rate. In other words, you would lose interest in self enough that the gaining interest in the higher power would be the beacon you would follow this life instead of the old headlights that are going to just predict another crash. Yeah? You would see a new beacon. Yeah? And this is the whole point of the program. But it's important to get clear of what's the exact nature of the wrong. If you find that you are the exact nature of the wrong, how are you going to get rid of you? 
drink yourself to death. You know how many people kill themselves? They usually shoot, them, shoot themselves in the head. Because that's where they're hearing the fucking alcoholism. Yeah, and they don't see that it's other than them, so they figure, I got to go down with the ship, I just can't live with the ship. But you can throw this old fucking captain off with the help of the higher power. And then you have your own ship, and you'll have a light directed by something wiser. And maybe it'll be so enriching that you'll step a lot of times into service and be available to others. Yeah. And it's a ri very rich, rewarding life. What better, if you were in hell, and someone told you there was a bus at about 3.30, and you got on the bus, and it took you out of hell, wouldn't you want to get a message in, to hell and tell people, hey, there's a bus at 3.30, Saturday, <laughs> out of hell? Yeah, I mean, I'll keep coming back here till I die. I would. It's the most important thing I have in this action figure life. Yeah, because I was shown, and I, it's, I, I've garnered the relief that came from this idea. And I wasn't hearing it in our program. And I was sick and tired of doing inventories and coming out with the same big stain, never getting washed away. Because we're calling that which has defeated us, and it uses the manifestations to defeat us, and we're calling them out. Yes? Yeah? So this is, you know, Look at a resentment. Somebody cut us off. Let's say, oh, my, my friend was playing the role of navigator. Christian, he's visiting. And he played the role of navigator last year. Last year, he fell asleep, and we went somewhere and took a while. To this year, twice, coming from Great Barrier. One of them was we turned off, and when we tried to turn back, we had to go 15 miles back. <laughs> To get, so it was 30 miles. We went 50 miles back and then 50 to get to where we, it was just another fucking hour. You know what I mean? It was insane. So yeah, a resentment towards that. <laughs> but because it's not my resentment, it doesn't have a long life. But when you call a resentment my resentment, it can last for 60 years. Resentment, wild resentments don't last long. They don't. But when you domesticate them and call them yours, they had movies, the Clampets or whatever, they had a vendetta for like four generations. You know what I mean? Our whole world now is based on grievance. People have big resentments about shit. Yeah? But the, the resentment has them. <coughs> so my resentment, resentment, you're going to trouble a lot later. My fear, fucking, first of all, get clear, it's not fear. Fear is a valid emotion. If a tiger ran in here right now, your, your appropriate reaction would be, I'd throw you in front of me. No. Your appropriate reaction would be to be fucking petrified. Yeah? And probably adrenaline would be released and you'd try to run or throw someone ahead of you or whatever. Yeah? That's fear. You're, we're suffering from mental anxiety. We're listening to the head and the head has a scared shit. It's almost like getting electrocuted a little bit all day. I mean, it's fucking incredible. Yeah. The fear emotion is dormant most for most of us. Yeah. But the instrument is there, and the mental anxiety plays it like a guitar. And so you have a physiological feeling of fear, but there's no apparent threat. So we're getting electrocuted all day by the head, yes? How can that possibly happen? Because there's faith in the head. It's demonstrating the other way, which is trusting finite self. Trusting finite self is you believe the fucking thoughts that are happening in your head. You believe that it's right, this place sucks and I should leave with no money, no place to go, and no fucking possibilities. And then you believe that and you take an action and now, now you're fucked in a hailstorm. Wouldn't that have been appropriate? You made a decision to leave the program and you get hit with a hailstone, get knocked out. Fucking unbelievable. We still wouldn't get it. Even God sending the message we don't get. Because something's playing God. Something is playing God. The biggest thing in AA is to quit playing God, one of them. Yeah? Now I thought quit playing God was I was playing God. And then I saw it differently. 
I am not that which is playing God. So quit playing God is like quit smoking. Does smoking continue? Yes, but I just quit smoking. Yeah. But do other smoking continues, but I quit it. I've lost interest in it. I, I've lost interest in that which is playing God. And I'm hearing something much deeper that I would say is God or some other thing. Let's say spirit or Buddha nature. And that silent message is overriding the loud megaphone of the head. Yeah. And that was brought about, that shift was brought about this program, the 12 steps, all the suggestions and the principles, and getting in the habit of being sober. And now it's been serving me for six, 36 years. Yeah. It didn't change that I did got run over by a car. It didn't change a lot of shit. What it did it was change the attitude and outlook. It changed the emphasis. It changed how I perceive things. I lost interest in self, and I gained interest in a lot of other stuff. But it, <coughs> the importance is the loss of interest in self. And how can you lose interest in self as self? Yeah. How can that which is playing God quit playing God? Wouldn't that be playing God? If that which is playing God tries to quit playing God, that's playing God. That You're not that which is playing God. Hallelujah. So, AA, I stopped calling resentments mine, and I had a lot easier time with them. I caught, first of all, I got clearer that what I was calling fear wasn't even fear. It's mental anxiety. And what's producing it is the head, and it's the faith in the head, and I lost faith in the head. I had been misled so many fucking times. I'm so sick and tired of the same old, same old. I've just lost interest in it. It's like it's still playing in the kitchen, but I don't fucking listen much. Yeah, But I hear it. But as a GPS, it was fired years ago. That was one of its main fucking jobs was my GPS. It's been fired. I haven't turned left when it said turn left in 30 years, probably. Yeah. And if I do, it's like a broken clock. It's right twice a, a day, basically. Yeah? That taking away the GPS is huge. Fucking huge. If, it's, if, if it can't direct you out of this program, the fear of what could happen to you in this program is scary to the self. The last thing it wants you to do is get sober. The last fucking thing. It doesn't want you to do the inventory. It doesn't want you to, it doesn't want any of that. This is a huge threat and it's working really hard to convince you to say fuck it and follow it. Yeah. If you can just sit on your ass and don't do anything, don't do anything at all. And just let's see what life does without you doing it. We in recovery in San Francisco, your sponsor <coughs> would ask you, <coughs> Excuse me, I got a bad cough. The sponsor would ask you, in like the first three weeks, what do you expect could happen in a year? If you possibly stay a year sober, what, can you, what do you think could happen? And you wrote the wildest imaginations. And then if you stayed sober a year, they would give it to you. And you had shortchanged yourself completely. You were, you were so small, you had been beaten down. You, there was a giant fucking uh, dinner waiting for you, and you were just expecting crumbs. It was very eye-opening for me, because I had been listening to something that fucking had taken almost everything away from me, and wasn't giving any of it fucking back. Now, talk about a slavery. You don't believe you're enslaved to self? So came in here, I saw that sentence, the fourth step workshop started to change. <laughs> People would come in with paper and pen and there was no writing. And I was just going off, I was on fire. And I, because I felt, man, fucking the relief I got. You remember we used it last night. This head has you believe you did everything that's ever happened through you this night. And I'm saying, you were driven to a lot of shit by something foreign to you. And when I was out there, remember, I was into cocaine, and let's say you were at a cocaine situation, and you've been up for six or seven days, and then the okay, oh, cocaine ran out, and suddenly you're sitting there, and you start looking at the rug, 
and you start thinking that lint is a piece of cocaine, and you start thinking, wow, this could be a lot of cocaine down there. And slowly, all the pride in the world, you drop down on all fours, and you start looking for fucking cocaine. You're picking lint up. You're picking up porcelain. Fucking, the, 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 the demoralized state was unbelievable. You were like rabid. And then you were fucking wishing you had fences to keep the other people. Because the other idiots, when they saw you, they were on pause looking for fucking shit. You believe you did that? You believe you sat there that night before you went out. I can't wait to end up at that guy's house with that rum. I just can't wait to get on all fours and snivel like a fucking one of those pigs looking for truffles, getting in there for the coke. Of course not. Something took over you, and that's where it led you. And you've been taken over day in and day fucking out, and it drops you at its common destinations, and you believe you did the whole drive. <clears throat> it's sociologically proven in recovery, finding in Narcotics Anonymous. Thousands of us are driven to the same three parking spaces, institutions, jails, and death. Thousands of unique Fords, they're all thinking they're different, they're all, any other Ford, hey Mitch, yeah? It's all ridiculous, you're a fucking Ford. You drive like one, you turn like one, you smell like one. And here we go, something drives all these unique cars to the same place. You don't see it? Go to meetings. Listen to people share their thoughts, their feelings, the things they did. They sure sound like your thoughts, your feelings, and the things you did. Yeah. You weren't driving the bus, and they weren't driving the bus. Self was driving the bus. And self doesn't have an infinite amount of traits. It's been recognized what self does, an extreme version of self that's triggered with alcohol and drugs. Yeah? You can... People recognize the alcoholic before he, they ever recognize themselves. Why? Why are you so blind to what has you when people meet you know you're a fucking alcoholic addict right away? How are you the last one to know? I humbly believe there's something in you blocking that off. Something is keeping the information you need or not hearing it so that it can stay it, keep its place of playing God. That's the only way I can see it. Why are people, we are the last people to know how fucked we are. That's suspicious. You think you're so aware and yet you don't have any idea of that. Something has taken us so over. That's why I know it, because I've lived under the tyranny. And I know the same thing you're living under. And it's not you and it's not me. Yeah. Self isn't going to be free. We're going to be free from self. So, so the my, and I could go on and on. I just want you to read the book. Why don't you do an inventory, if you can, five minutes. Instead of calling all the self's manifestations, call them self's manifestations. And just see if you travel a little lighter. And I'll tell you, the difference between a resentment and my resentment is huge. And the difference between fear and mental anxiety is huge. Yeah? And the difference between trying to stop doing what you do and or seeing that something was doing it through you works a lot better. Yes? This isn't about us this is not a self help program. It's a reliance on a higher power program. Okay. So we admit defeat and then we find out what defeated us. And it, and you're gonna find out it's not you. <coughs> Hallelujah. Because if it's not you, this is what happened with me when I saw it that night. Page 64, read it. I read it so many times with the workshop, being convinced self. But then I saw self as foreign. It was unbelievable. I don't know how it came, but I distinctly knew it was not me. Then, as soon as I saw that, the possibility is I can be free from it. First I had to see it as not me, and then the possibility I could be free from it. Because when I saw it was me, the only possibility was trying to be free as it. And the only way it would let me be free as it was beginning very high. Yeah? And that would be very temporary. 
Yeah. But I saw it, not me, so the possibility, I can be free from this fucking thing. And so it is. And then it actually showed me for years of life in a second of me trying to get out of self as self. That's basically what my gender was. I was trying to get out of me, but I wanted to be there to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And it had its run, but it's over. I'm no different than you. I may have just heard something you haven't heard yet. So here we are, sharing it. I have great faith in this message, because it's true. Self is not us. We have a foreign installment that's dictating to us how it sees life as how we see life. And I run into so many people who believe they hate themselves and they're their own worst enemies. It just fucking infuriates me. You know, can you imagine waking up with that, that you hate yourself? What kind of forecast are you, are you going to hear that for the rest of the day? Yeah? Then you're going to drink, exactly. And that's the whole point. That's what it wants. It wants you to do fucking something. Yeah? It wants you to drink. It can't drink. It needs you to drink. But once you drink, the genie's going to come out of the body, and it has more than three wishes for your ass. <laughs> it has a lot of wishes for you. Yeah? And by then, it's too late. Once it's out, the only possibility is go to a meeting, enter a rehab. There's not much. You, everything has shrunk. As soon as the parasite gets its food, you're going to be out to lunch. Really. So this I've seen it. I've witnessed it in myself in, intimately. I've, been, I've lived in incomprehensible, pitiful demoralization. I could not believe how low I could go or how low this thing could take me. I've seen people, all the principles and morals they had evaporate after one hit of a free base pipe. I've seen people would do anything for the next hit. If that ain't slavery, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. And we're in, first we're enslaved, and then we have to live a life of slavery. And there's, the enslavement is not being noticed. We are not clear on the exact nature of the wrong. And the exact nature of the wrong is foreign to us. Yeah? You may have a flu, but you're not the flu. Yeah? You're not the flu. Stop calling flu symptoms yours. And in this case, a much larger thing, a whole lifetime. Cops, stop calling the manifestations of alcoholism yours. Because <coughs> they're not yours. They're shared. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the message that I felt. Because I go to, I've gone to a lot of meetings. I never heard it in the community. And therefore, we started sharing it. And actually, it wasn't a good move, really. I would have been a circuit speaker. <laughs> it sort of crashed my career, whatever you want to call it. Because you would, I thought people would like to hear it, but then I ran into a lot of fucking static. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now people call me, I'm untraditional AA. They're in traditional AA. But they're fucking sick. And they're fucking still captured by the past. They're still going over something they believe they did while under the influence of 40 years ago, and the fucking head is still fucking harvesting guilt and shame from it. Mm. Cast as a doer, when you had nothing fucking to do with it, the most you had to do with it, you, the most you had to do with the robbery was you're the car that they used to get to the bank. You had nothing fucking to do with this robbery. Yeah, you've been used by something. If you're not, if you're not, don't believe it, Take a look at a parasites in nature. I'll give you one example of it. Because when I started using the word parasite in AA, <clears throat> a lot of people gave me, sent me a lot of information about parasites. <laughs> yeah. The first one was this mushroom from this a species called cordyceps. And this munch mushroom is confronted with what everything in this world is confronted with, which is reproduction. Yeah. Now the mushroom has spores, which are its way of reproducing, 
but the spores are underneath an umbrella and it's based on luck. You know, if an animal hits it or the wind blows a certain way, maybe it will land into an area where a mushroom can live. The mushroom said, fuck this, this, has, this is too chancy. The mushroom now lands, targets insects. It targets ants, this one species. The spore lands on the ant and burrows into the ant. Jacks into the brain of the ant and tells the ant where the mushroom wants to go. Dank, dark place. Uses the ant for transportation. When it arrives where the mushroom wants to arrive, it kills the ant and it grows right out of the ant's head. It's not that, it's not that distant from us, eh? It's not. And weirdest thing is, a lot of the different species of cordyceps target different insects. Yeah. You do this exact same thing, target diff different insects, take over the control, the GPS, and drive you somewhere. What, is, what do you think alcoholism has done? Yeah? When you went to the dealer, were you thinking thousands of people were going? No, it was you going to the fucking dealer. Yeah? Just you and you alone. But at the same moment, thousands of us were doing the exact same fucking thing. Thousands, more than thousands, millions, yes? Yet every one of us think it's a unique event. That's not natural. That's manufactured. The parasite has so, is so hostile to us, it had to come up with a great strategy. Because it knows if the host saw the parasite, it would kick the parasite off because only you're only going to have a fucking hostile future if this thing takes you over. So this parasite has convinced to convince the host that it's the parasite. So you can't imagine throwing it off because you think it's you. It doesn't need those claws to set in. It has you holding it. Isn't that insane? There's this stuff called candida, another thing. There's another one that's really great. The nickname is tox, toxin, but it's a long, long name. It's some thing, a bug that lives in mammals. And this one, it needs, it can only reproduce in the, in the belly of a cat. It, it can only reproduce in a cat belly. And most of it is not in cat bellies. They're in other mammals. And a lot of them are in like rats and mice. And so what this thing does to the rat, it tells the rat, if you see a cat, run right up to them. Run right up to that fucking cat. And here's some utensils, knife and fork, go right up. And so in plain day, daylight, there's like four cats, and this rat just runs right up to them. And they're like fucking flipped out, and then they, you know, kill the, the rat. And they digest it, and the toxic, you know, the bug gets where it wants to go, and then it shits out. The cat shits it out, and there it is, another, to go somewhere else, yeah? So it, it, this seemed like, you know, talk about Fear Factor, those old shows. What a fucking challenge. For me to reproduce, I'm in a mouse, I've got to get into the cat fucking stomach. How the fuck am I going to do that? How? I don't have any legs. I can't call up an Uber. I'm stuck here. How am I going to get there? Exactly. Just use the fucking rat's brain because it has legs. Yeah, it can go somewhere and shoot. Just go to the cat, get eaten. There it is, success. Now the funny thing is, I bet you there was no narrative in the rat's head. It was just directed. But we have a narrative that I'm doing everything. <laughs> so as I'm going down to. Imp pitiful, demoralized, incomprehensible conditions, I have a story that I did it all. That's like, that's like a hell upon a hell. It's like a hell sandwich. You're the meat. You're a hell sandwich. You have, a, you have a story that you did your own demise. Oh, fuck. So there's a solution. You put it up. There's a solution. I'm humbly saying, if there's really a solution, the problem, you are not the problem. The nature of the problem is foreign to you. That's the exact nature of it. It's foreign to you. So no matter how bad you think you are, that which is saying you think you are that bad, it ain't you. It's not you. 
you have not lost that childlikeness. It's just been covered up. Yeah. I'm telling you, I have so much gratitude. I'm sick. I feel really sick and physically right here. But my gratitude and attitude and outlook is so buoyant. It's mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been on this run for eight days. I'm feeling like fucking, I, if I had a, two good legs, I'd be clapping it like uh, the Wizard of Oz, and bouncing around. That has been given to me by the relief from this bondage of self. Fuck, I'm 72 years old. Yeah, mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. And I'm like fucking stoked. Because this is, I've tasted every bit of relief. I just, and... How are you going to be free from the bondage of self while you're the active link of the bondage of self? You're taking yourself to be self. How are you going to be free from the bondage of self? Why do you think the bondage of self is? <laughs> exactly what we're at right now. We're bound to self by being identified as it. That's the bondage of self. Now, you can get an extreme whipping or a lesser whipping, but you're going to be whipped. <laughs> you're going to be driven, and you're probably going to want to fucking drink. And, it's, and it'll make, and a lot of people, well, we know what happens. I mean, I worked, I was in Delancey Street, this program, for two years. <clears throat> and on, there's 300 people in there, pretty big place. And they had a way of controlling everything. And if you got mad at someone, they had a little box, and you put a slip in, and you'd say you want to meet this person. And they have these things called games, yeah? And you... They'd have a big group, about 12 or 14 people, three times a week at night. They'd drive us to this uh, warehouse we had, and everyone on the way, you couldn't hear a pin drop. Everyone was super fucking anxious. And then you go into the game, and it was all this yelling and screaming, yes? And then sometimes you'd see someone pissed on the floor, and you could see that they were getting pissed off, and there was a glass door outside. And then you'd see they would be cooking, the head would be telling something. Then they suddenly run out the door, and as soon, not before they run out the door, as soon as they get out the door, they realize they don't have a pot to piss in, they have no money, there's no bus running at that tower, and they just look back and they can't go back in. <laughs> this is what the fucking head does to us. It withholds knowledge until we really make a fucking bad decision on self, and then it dumps on you. You should have known better. It, it fucks you both ways. It fucks you if you do something, it fucks you if you don't do something. So, yeah. There is a possibility, please, please. Yeah. Do an inventory. Tell the truth, share it with another person. Try to use six and seven so when you see the self happening, give it over to this higher power. That's the program. You recognize what you're not, and you ask, you go, I'm entirely ready for this to be removed. I like to call it reconfigured. And then you ask that power to remove it. That's six and seven. You clean up the life by making a list of who you owe amends to. Step nine, you try to do the best you can. Then 10, 11, 12, 10 and 11 are maintenance steps. Yeah? <clears throat> you keep taking a look to make sure self is subdued. Yeah? And if you do something stupid, you make amends. Yeah? And then 11, you try to improve your conscious contact. By losing interest in self is a great improvement in your conscious contact. And they, they suggest two things, but there's many suggestions, and it's meditation and prayer. If you don't, aren't good at meditating and you like nature, sit in nature, do what you can. And then step 12 is the agenda of, of AA, which is after having, you know, being sober, you help other people to achieve sobriety and try to practice these principles in all your affairs. If you can't do that, limit your affairs until you can. Yeah? That's the AA program. But the exact nature of wrong, I humbly believe, is the pivot of everything else. Because if you're trying to recover from self as self, you're going to have a very uh, diminished recovery. Yeah? But if you have a clarity of the exact nature of wrong, what this program can do is astounding. Yeah, it's astounding. You can get established in a condition that the problem doesn't exist as you anymore. I never think about drinking or using. I, uh, I don't think about going to meetings. I think which one. I'm in the habit of being sober. Yeah. 
just, that's the way my life is. Just like I was in the habit of being loaded early. Yeah, yeah. All right. I, what time is it? No. One, I did, so let's say, if you have any questions or shares, whatever. Yeah. This is the, this is really what I wanted to get across. Because you can see it in proof. If you're really serious about this, you're going to do an inventory sooner or later in sobriety. You have to, really. You need to have an inventory. And so if you do, and you can see what you're going to look at in the inventory, and not call them yours, but something else's manifestations, I think it's a profound shift in how you understand the program. Yeah. And so now you have, instead of just hearing, you're going to look at your resentments and your fears, maybe they're not. Maybe you can look at them as self's resentments and self's fears. Yeah. I found I got a much better relief and the people I work with with this idea I seem to they seem to have long term recovery and there you go. Yes? So if you have anything you want to say or share, uh, we'll be back tomorrow and uh, I don't know, whatever you like we can talk about. Or I can share my story, but if you wanna you know, we used to do a thing, a very simple thing for years. We put three words up here, so we'd have money, relationships, health, let's say. Yeah? And then we would change the meaning of the word by not, but not changing any of the letters, not doing anything. And that would be, we would put my money, my health, my relationships. So I want everyone here to have a lot of money, but I don't want you to have any of my money. You see? The difference in that? What? We're playing the role of my. We're giving everything all the meaning it has, and we're not giving it the meaning we would like to have given it. We're giving the meaning self wants to give it. It's using us in a way to write a letter. So, my, you're you not your resentments. They were resentments produced by a view called self-centeredness. Yeah. The fear, making mountains out of molehills. Yeah, you're not doing that. You're at the effect of it. It's mental anxiety, and it's based on faith in the thoughts. If you have faith in the higher power, the drop in of anxiety is going to be amazing. First of all, most of the anxiety is coming from what's not happened, past and future. When you get rooted in the present, there may not be much uh, shit to induce anxiety right now. Truly. Yeah? <clears throat> so the anxiety, the fear, and the acting out basically was because we were self-centered and self-seeking and frightened. Yeah? Both, both descriptions have self in it. Yeah? So now the self isn't the dominant thing that running us, so we're probably not going to be stepping on as many people's toes anymore. I, if I had a situation and someone was married, I wouldn't move towards anything like that. Because I wouldn't like it to happen to me. I wouldn't. Now before, I didn't give a shit. I, do it, I thought I had the right to do anything I want. Yeah. But now I don't see it that way. And I'm telling you, I'm much happier now than I was when I got everything I wanted out there. I felt more and more empty the more and more I got out there. <clears throat> and I lost all the qualities that my Irish grandmother had injected into me, mm -hmm. or seemingly lost. And I thought I had it going on. I did. I was prostituting myself, basically. But I thought I had it going on. But I was, what I was exchanging for the drugs was much more valuable than the drugs. But luckily, nothing is lost. It's just misplaced. Yeah. And my life has been reclaimed and put to a better use. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, yes. <coughs> you say in your book, when it lands, hmm? you use that word land, when yeah. it lands. So when you're doing a fourth step, yeah. I think it's very important to let that shit land. Oh, yeah. And be with it. Oh, the stuff that you supposedly did. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then it goes to the next phase. That's who phase. you are, actually. You're reviewing who you have been 
whether you've been hijacked by a parasite, however, whatever language you call it, this is where you've been. Let that be and yes. be with it. Don't take an inventory trying to get away from it. Let it land and have an impact on you and feel it. Like Krishnamurti talks about, the solution is in the problem. And yet, the next wave is accountability. Yeah. So you see, you didn't take the shit on the lawn, the dog did. Now, you're accountable for the dog, because it's called yours. But if the dog took a shit on the lawn, you're not thinking it over for 30 years. So this is the point. I agree with the sitting there and get marinated. But don't fucking swim in that suit. Yeah, no, I Go to the next point of accountability. And this is, I wanted to share this, because I did it last night. This is very important, I feel. Yeah? You'll, you'll like it. This follows it. AA, many people I notice, when they come into recovery, when they're in recovery, they are very easily able to realize something is doing for them what they couldn't do for themselves and have gratitude and honor and awe. Yes? Quite easy, it seems. Yet, very few people see that something did through us what we would never have done by ourselves, which is the lower power. And this is what we're trying to bring up. Yeah? We take all the fault and we give all the glory. I think we need to point to the, what was the source of the fault and it has not been us. Yeah? So yes, I did not skip any amends, I did inventories as seeing my role in things, but there is another wave we need to sort of imagine in recovery, which is moving from the responsibility of all that shit we didn't do and see the accountability of us in life, but not being responsible for it. Because I do not want to see someone with 40 years sobriety held by a, gri a, a grip from the past thinking they did something while they were under the influence. I do not believe you chose to do any of that as an individual. You were driven to do it. Something took us over. So yes, the marinating of it, yeah. And the attitude of seeing it as a way of escaping is from where you're at. I do not believe writing an inventory the way we're presenting is looking for escape. I believe it's trying to get to the exact nature of the wrong. But I believe, you, yeah, if you want to try to escape it, the thing with AA is all the shit I was trying to avoid for years and I thought I was successful for, that all landed. And I let it, and it felt as real as it wanted to feel. And by letting it finally feel as real as it wanted to feel, I saw it as unreal. Yeah. But I'm trying, where I want to. I believe there's another wave in recovery, which is accountability. And I believe we've been stuck too long in the responsibility. In the what? In the responsibility. I do not believe most of the shit I did out there, I did. I was driven. I was used, just like it says in the book. We're driven by a hundred forms of something. So, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm accountable for the ticket, but something else needs to pay for it finally. I'm tired of paying for all those fucking tickets. Yeah. Let's bring self to court. Yes. Let's see. Oh, here's, let's see. <laughs> but yes, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about um, the Thank parasite, you the parasitic yes. thing where it takes over, literally, it takes over a host. Yeah. Right? And I thought about. Um, how it is explained in the step of a portion of it, which I resisted because there's parts in it. He was 15 years sober with Rose, so there's parts in it that like, I didn't get. Yeah. I had an eighth grade education because of drug and alcohol robbing me of, you know, pursuing yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, it, got, it got to a point where it said, you know, the beachheads of Salerno. I'm like, I don't even know where that is. I can't believe this I'm never going to get But there's a point where it said, alcohol, now become the rapacious predator. Bleeds us, bleeds us of all self sufficiency. Yeah. So that, and, and something to, and all, like, you can't resist its demand. Yes. But it's bleeding us. And when I looked up, I said, rapacious credit. What the hell? Nobody uses that term. And it's something that turns around and eats suckers. Yeah. So that's what we were describing. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, in order to understand that, I had to like get a dictionary. Mm -hmm. 
And yes. I, I understand that. So a rapacious predator is exactly what we were describing. It's like alcohol yes. turns around and consumes us instead of us consuming it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. Now it becomes well, a rapacious yes. predator. Yes. It leaves us to sell all self-sufficiency. That is, we think it's doing something for us, and it's, you know, sucking everything else out the back door. Yes. Yes. So that's the rapacious predator. No, I, I hey, that's I'm with. What you're talking about, yes, right? I'm with it a hundred percent. Yes, it's just like when you own thoughts, they now can own you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. a and thought in saying, your head called yours could ruin your day. Mm -hmm. That thought, if I call it yours, does not ruin my day. But the mm -hmm. same thought, if I call it mine, has the ability to ruin my day. And the same with my resentment. It's like you're owning it. It's yes. Like you're taking possession of this resentment. Yes. I mean, and it's sort of like voice. you're giving mixed messages. Oh, oh yes. It's, I, I found it fundamentally uh, a big aberration. Yeah. Okay. That we are so easily willing to, to, and very clearly, be grateful for something doing for us, but we don't have any kind of sense of pointing out what came through us that, and did what we would never have done, which is what that parasite has done. And I think it has escaped a lot of attention over the years. Mm -hmm. And all of its little misgivings we've owned. Yeah? And to me, that's slavery, literally. I mean, to be held by the past after 40 years of sobriety is insane to me. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so, yep, thank you. Thank you. Thanks very well, thank much. You. Yeah. Because I know you're speaking to people who are like new in recovery. I just heard about this through something else. And between us, we have, well, he's got 44 years and 35 years. Great. We've got a lot of variety. Yeah. Yeah. But it meets me right where I'm at. There's yeah. something of value. And I'm like, oh, this is pe for people in rehab. No, we're 35 years. And we're, we're, yes. there's a lot in this for me. And you bought your book. And, um, oh, great. Yeah, I'm finding it. I'm really glad I came. Thank you so well, much. Well, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Just another point that I just thought. Um, not taking accountability for all the stuff that happened in your alcoholism. You don't, in your sobriety, you also don't take accountability for that. It's like you, you went on a trip. Yeah. And you did a lot of stuff. But it's not a transaction. No. You you think you're getting something out of whatever it is that you do. You think you're going somewhere, but you really don't know where you're going. No. And then you end up, and in retrospect, you go, holy shit, I got all this stuff I never even dreamed of, and that's sobriety. So it's kind of like the flip of... Well, yes, it's like the distinct difference between the old employer and the new employer. Well, there's a new parasite in your life, and it's a good one. Exactly. It's, be it's beneficial. Yeah, so I yeah. think some it's of the stuff spirit. you're trying to talk about... Uh, well, you can't really call spirit a parasite, though, because <laughs> it's, it's a win-win. Yeah. Where okay. a parasite has a little bit of a different... Uh, uh, pay off cost ratio. You, know, you usually lose and it wins. But yeah, so thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming, by the way. It's good oh, to see you. Uh, no problem. Good to hear you. Oh, yeah. You know, it's interesting because what you're saying like gives a lot of descriptions to things that I've experienced. But So I'm right with you. But I also, when I actually think about it, I always come back to this question what is it that like leads you to actually do this ultimately? Do what? Go through recovery. And have this experience, and have that alteration. Oh, I don't know. For me, I, uh, you know, I lost all hope after I uh, left this close place called Delancey Street. So I was in Delancey Street for two years. They told me everything to do, and I thrived in there. You know, I went to college, I had friends, uh, and stuff. But I just and I graduated from that, and. Uh, what happened after I left, they didn't really have much of a support thing, and they didn't like AA. And when I left, that the dormant parasite woke up, and I went back out, and I went on a 10-month run. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. What, what is it you think that makes it dormant or not dormant? What is that about? Well, I think it was afraid to come out in, in that area of Delancey Street. There was too many people would have seen it, <coughs> so to speak, so it laid low. 
but it knew it knew it was going to get its time with me alone, and that's what it did. And when it did, it started to talk to me about what I'd been missing for two years, mm -hmm. making it sound like romantic instead of getting shot at and fuck like that. Mm -hmm. Sound romantic, and I'd been a, a staunch customer of its products. I bought it again, and I went down to a bar in San Francisco because in the program it was very insidious. When I was in Delancey Street, I was very clear my problem was narcotics. Yeah, I've been an intravenous drug user since 17. And, yeah, but I thought I s made a statement I could probably drink, and I didn't run it by anyone in the program. I just filed it away. And then when I left the program, it used that file when it was advertising what I'd been missing, and it said, well, let's just go down to the bar, California or Polk Street, the Rosenthal. And I did. Drove down there, and I walked in. I thought the bartender had been getting my newsletter, but he didn't know. He didn't re recognize me. I looked too healthy, probably. And I ordered a beer, and uh, nothing happened. So I ordered another beer, and halfway through it, I wanted more. And more was cocaine. I looked around the room, and a guy was selling coke, and I bought some. I went out to the car, which I lost the next day, and I did a line of coke, and it was truly like uh, Jack Nicholson coming through the door. Here's Johnny in The Shining. And uh, after 10 months, I washed up. Uh, I went out on March 17, 1988. Not like I wasn't out March 16, 15, 14, but I was, it was a, a signpost, St. Patrick's Day. Mm. And I went into a blackout, and I came to March 21st, and I looked outside the window, and there was a hang gliding park, a uh, high, hang gliding airport, and there's no hang gliding airport in San Francisco. I never saw one. So I was somewhere else other than where I lived. And uh, I was sitting across from a guy who I'd never seen before. And uh, we were passing a bottle of Royal Gate vodka. And uh, he had a bulbous nose, varicose veins on his head, you know, all the veins. And uh, I said to myself, this guy's a bum. <laughs> and lo and behold, uh, I thought he saw me as a bum. And something happened, stopped everything. And it was just like a CNN news flash. <laughs> No headline, and it was just a headline, and it was unfucked. Mm -hmm. And the fuck, like you said, it caught every bit of me. The bottom, I wasn't observing I was on a bottom, that was in the bottom. Every, every bit of me was in the bottom, and I was, something was reading me the law, and it said, you're fucked, and you're not managerial quality. <laughs> and then, from that day on, I've never had a strong feeling or thought about drinking or using. It's over 36 years now. But it would have probably died on the vine unless I met a way of life, which life conspired to get me to an AA meeting that night. Right. And I've been going ever since. So the miracle was I got struck sober, but the way of life has extended the miracle for 36 years. Was that the self? Hmm? Was that the self? No, the, what, got, what got stunned was self, yes. So I was there, and that which I called me had stopped. And then in that five, ten seconds, life talked to what I was, and told what I am, I'm fucked, and I'm not managerial quality. I had a reprieve for a little bit of time, and the truth came in, and left a huge lasting impression on me. When the self returned, it didn't have the power it used to have. And the last hurrah was when I was dr getting driven back to the city. I tried to talk the woman that was driving me. I tried to talk her into getting some coke, getting you know some beer, getting the dirty magazines, renting the hotel room. She had followed that equation with me many times. Hadn't been that satisfying for her. She said no, and she made me a deal. Do you want a place to stay? And that's what I was looking for. And I said yeah. And she says you got to go to an AA meeting. So she brought me to a men's meeting, March 21st, and then I've been sober ever since. I've been going to meetings ever since. What would you describe like the nature of your recovery from that point to the realization of the self later? First, I was super ja jazzed up. Then I was on a wave for a couple of years. And by the time I started to think about shit, I, I was in the habit of being sober. 
But I wasn't thinking about, oh, God, or I didn't care. I felt relief in the meetings. I realized so much. I spent two years in a place, and not liking that place, I had to admit my, my life looked better with them running it than it ever did with me running it. So I had gotten the clarity of the third step, and, but I got, was given an experience that I call surrender when that download happened. And after you are given the, the intimacy of surrender, you can entertain it. So I'm now, I, I'm surrendered. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, I know I can surrender now. I don't need to have a peak moment. I've been introduced to surrender, and I can surrender. I have a flavor of it. And so I feel like I'm in surrendered because there's, I'm not in any argument anymore. I'm just going with the fucking flow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just don't... I There's a lot of thoughts, but not one is noteworthy. I never remember any thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I had plenty today. Not one is n noteworthy. Not one you would like to catch and keep. They just, they're just like babbling brook water going over rocks. Not seriously. I probably have not retrieved a thought out of the thought bag for years. Sometimes I have an intuitive whack that usually helps me with when I'm working on a car or something like that. But when no great psychological message I ever get. The thoughts are just, you know, you're going to die. <laughs> Something like that. It's like it sends me threats still. <laughs> you know. It, you don't, what? <laughs> it, but no, it doesn't do shit. No. Yeah. So I don't know. Is that an answer, whatever? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, is that is habit is an action without thought. And if you look at the logic of what AA says, the problem resides in the mind. You don't want thought to have anything to do with the solution. So if you follow suggestions like they offer here, you're going to get into a habit of doing shit that's going to be beneficial to you, where you were in a habit of doing shit that wasn't beneficial to you. Yeah? So I am in the habit of being sober. So it would be harder for me to drink than to not drink. It would. It would be like a mountain climb for me to drink. It's the easy thing for me is not drink. I don't think about it. I don't care about it. I don't get, I'm not interested in it. I don't think everyone is having a super time and I'm not, and none of that shit. I just fucking, but that was, this is a habit. It's a good habit, eh? Wow. I don't want to come back. I'm seven years old, first of all. I don't want to be hanging around the streets trying to get it on, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, hey, Grandpa, chill out, you know? What the fuck? I don't want to... I want to have a bed I'm familiar with. My body doesn't... It needs a good bed. I don't like that. I'm not going to camp. I'm not into camping. I don't want to sleep near the river. I don't. I don't want to know, you know... It's a, I'd rather just... Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm, over the hill for that shit. Yeah, this now is time. Uh, hey, hey, man, why do you think we. I have so much gratitude because can you imagine what an incredible solution is that the problem doesn't exist for you anymore? That is an incredible solution. If you've had, been under the tyranny of active addiction, for that problem not to exist for you is on a, what the hierarchy of miracles, it's right up there on the top. To have that every day is awesome, man. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It still exists. You just have it under control. Hmm? It still exists. You just have it under control. No, I don't believe it may exist, but not as me. That's the, I don't care if it exists. I can co I can coexist with it. I cannot coexist with it as me. I cannot do that. As me, there's no coexisting. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a word, but it's very important. It says the problem that exists for you. That's an experience. If you want to have that experience a lot, it goes to another place, which is the problem does not exist as you anymore. Yeah. It's different. It's different. So yeah, 
it may exist, but it doesn't exist as me anymore. That's all I wanted, is be clear about that. Yeah, yeah. You, you just, just before, when you're answering a question, you talked a little bit about, okay, so I had that experience of surrender, right, in the bottom, yes. and now I have the flavor of surrender, yes. so I can surrender at any moment without going to the bottom, right? Yes. And I understood that perfectly. Yeah. But, because I know that. Yes. But then you talked about like being surrendered, now yes. being surrendered. And that's something like I, I hear people say, but I'm not sure I quite understand the difference of being able to go to surrender at any moment and being surrendered. Well, being surrendered sort of bypasses the need to surrender every moment. But being surrendered is about two basic things. I'm not managerial quality, and I'm powerless over our drinking and drugs. So I am surrendered to that. I'm clear, there's no debate, there's no argument. It doesn't come up for review, it's a done deal. And that opens up the ability to surrender to other things. Yeah. But I'm surrendered to that fact. I was in argument with that fact for most of my life, and now I have come to surrender to that fact. My arguing with the fact did not make it a not fact. Yeah. I was fucked, no matter how much I argued or not, because I'm not managerial quality, and I, I'm a, I need, I, it's like having a big dog in your house. When I'm sober, the dog's asleep. I got the run in the house. I don't know about other people who maybe can chip or do something like that. Abstinence to me is the key for me. Because if I had one little ad get in, I may start <clears throat> thinking about the product. I have a complete disinterest in it. I don't give a shit at all. And, it's, and I have not done it. If I did it, it, there would be some struggle with it. It's not been, it's not, has nothing with me doing it. It's been done to me. The urge was removed, and I haven't had a strong thought or feeling. I had had tons of thoughts and feelings. I never had a strong one concerning this, and I know what a strong one is because it would I would do something. I never rarely <coughs> ever said no to an urge. So this thing took the fucking urge out, which is mind-boggling. I mean, unbelievably mind-boggling. If I was having to fight an urge every day, I'd be fucked. Because mm -hmm. I'm just not an urge fighter. Yeah, if something compels me, I'm probably going to do it. But it's out. My mother would have loved to have done that. She couldn't. The state would have loved to have done it. It couldn't. Something did it. I'd like to say it's a higher power. But something did it. It's a miracle. I, can't, I would never have been able to imagine it. The best I could have think is I know how to live with it. No. I've lost. It does it. There's, there's no mm, There's nothing there. When there's an oof, it never goes to alcohol or drugs ever. It's, it's not even close to any solution. I didn't do that, but if it's been done to me, suffering from the same thing, I believe it can be done to you. Yeah. Miracles aren't personal. I, don't, I have a miracle, you don't. It's not that way. There's no chosen one. Yeah. There's possibilities, and what opens you to a possibility I have no idea, but something stepped in and changed my life. Some power put a stop to me. Yeah. Because nothing could. I got run over twice, didn't do it. Shot at, didn't do it. Ridge broke, didn't do it. Nothing could seem to do it, but something did. And I, you know, my sobriety has not been a struggle. It's been a fucking, a huge relief from the beginning to now. I mean, I was stoked. I loved meetings. I was completely, I saw the value of service. Yeah? I saw the value of service. Yeah? It's, a, it's one of the most important things in AA because the disease is we've got our interest and attention is orbiting this idea of Paul, mm -hmm. which is self. And it's almost like this brings of Saturn. It's sort of stuck in an orbit. And thinking about it or talking about it may not do it, but if you do service, the interest and attention is going to be pulled out of that orbit. And you're going to feel available and present. 
You are. You're going to feel something. You're going to feel bigger than you did before you were involved in the service. And there's a fucking message in there. Yet yeah, you are available in the present. That's your inherent condition. Is you're always here now, which makes me available and present. And to me, that is being of service. Being of service is av being available and present, really. I'm available and present to put chairs up. I'm available and present to listen to you. I'm available and present, yeah? So I am of service now. But first I had to do service to get to the point of being of service. I needed... <coughs> You can't imagine something you never had a taste of. You need a taste. You need a taste of freedom. You need a taste of relief. And then when you get a taste of it, <coughs> you'll recognize it. And instead of, this is why I told you today, I said, if it works out, remember it. Because the head doesn't, the head will forget a miracle in a half an hour. That you have to, that's effort. You have to point out that something's working, because it will not. It will not fucking give credit where credit is due. It will keep saying, oh, this sucks and fucks. No, you talk to me, and now you feel a lot better, and you didn't you go to the crack pipe. That's facing life successfully. And then more, you've got to be a, you've got to be a witness of your own event. <coughs> yeah. Well, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. What, what if it's difficult to find words in yourself and you beat yourself down because of your shortcomings? Even at a period of sobriety, because I had five years once, but I still couldn't find that word because I thought I lost everything I wanted, you know, and I'm, I'm there now. I'm, I'm only like two weeks away from a relapse, and it's it's just like I can't find that word in me. My, my shortcomings, yeah. the memories of my shortcomings and what I lost is beating me down. That's why I was talking to you earlier because it, it still it still makes sense to just get high because you gotta get busy. Yeah. Do service. See if they need to see smooth. Keep the fucking thing busy. It's like sending it around a corner for a half an hour so you can have some relief. Or get involved in a great show like Bloodline on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, and instead of being involved in your drama, watch a real good drama. With better writing than yours. <laughs> you think that's part of the parasite those, that, that brings those memories back? <laughs> Most definitely. It's once, it needs you. It doesn't have legs. It can't do shit. It, it needs you. And people always flip out when I say, watch a good fucking written show, but it distracts your mind off of you. And right now, in the beginning, that's all you need. When people, I didn't drink coffee when I came in. Most cocaine addicts, I would imagine, don't. I mean, why would I need coffee? Yeah? And so these guys were taking me to fucking coffee shops all the time in the beginning, the first few months. And we basically did nothing. Just sat there. They were talking motorcycles, whatever. And after, once, every once in a while, I say, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm not doing anything. They say, are you, they go, are you sober? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they were fucking just making me waste time until I got some fucking strength behind me. This is what this, this is a wee program, bro. It's not your only sail that you can be blown by. Yeah, there's a momentum here. This is, there's a tradition in our program says there's a loving God that's expressing itself through our group conscience. Now, this has nothing to do with me, but I hope you felt something here, and that's what you felt. You felt a loving presence that is expressing itself through this group presence, this group togetherness, yeah? Let it feed you. It's the milk of heaven, you know? <clears throat> yeah. So when you're listening to you, listen to something else. Listen to music, listen to a show, or do something. Don't think. Do not start thinking about it. It's gonna fucking it's gonna procreate like a rabbit. You're gonna have tons of shit. Do not start thinking about your problem. That's the bigger problem. Seriously. Yeah. And but talk about how you feel before you do anything. Yeah. After is yeah, before, like you did with me. Yeah. So therefore someone can watch you and point out that hey, you said 
no, it's, there's no way it's going to work, and now it's fucking working. So you were wrong. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and it's not you that was wrong. It's self is fucking wrong. Self is one of the worst God-playing things you ever see. It's fucking off constantly. Yeah? So I'm happy to see you. Just stick with it. I've watched Bloodline, <laughs> Netflix. I had two knee operations. My head was just dwelling on the knee. Fuck that. I put on Netflix. Hey, good writing. I got absorbed in John and the other people. And I followed it. It was great. It worked. Oh, I should be doing something. No, you know, who's telling you that? <laughs> you know, find something that is, this isn't martyrdom. You don't have to make a culprit. Yeah? Just take the easy way out. Watch a good movie. Yeah. Seriously. What you think is never going to change can change in a two hour movie. I swear to God. Your whole feeling, or go to a meeting. I bet you the way you felt when you walked in may be different when you walk out. Yeah. This, yeah. Yes. Thanks, um, Paul. It's great to meet you, Mike. I was told that uh, you'd be fascinating and uh, you are that and more. Um, I hear the enthusiasm for that March 88. And maybe it was months, and maybe it was years, and I'm kind of wondering, did someone come along, uh, like your own little Mr. Miyagi, armed with the facts about themselves with the manuscript? Was that something that you tapped into? Oh, being people like yeah, in the book and and yes, the, I went to the, Joe the, and Charlie. Yeah, Joe and Charlie seminars had a big effect on me. Yeah. I was in the city, and I saw two people talking. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. I saw two, two people talked at this meeting and they were both lit up. Yeah? So I went after they, at the end of the meeting, I said, what's going on? They said they had just come in from this Joe and Charlie seminar. I had never heard of it, so I logged it in. And then a couple months later, a secretary announced, I have applications for the next Joe and Charlie seminar. So I signed up and, and paid for it, and I went to Sacramento. And I went for two, three years, and then I need, didn't need any more. The first year, I saw my role in things when they explained the fourth step. When the, I did my first, I did not see my role in things. When they explained it, I saw my role in things, ran, ran back to my motel room and did another inventory. Yeah. It was awesome. And uh, they did, the way they explained it, it was so, it was easy access. And there was five, 600 people there that were enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. which is not always the case at an AMU. And they were really jazzed up about sobriety, so it was contagious. And I was just, it was really powerful, really powerful. And I recommend that. And I had, we had great do, uh, old icons in AA in San Francisco. We had Frank Brennan, he had a chin about like the Gibraltar, an old Irish, uh, fucking dock worker. He had over 60 years sobriety, right. Frank Brennan. We had Cy Payne. We had all these, Herman, Harry. Christian knows, Harry, he just passed away. Right. But we had a lot of fucking yeah. icons in our community. Don Fritz ever come through? Hmm? Don Fritz or Joe Hoff or anything? No, I don't know. But Cy P was my sponsor yeah. and uh, he was uh, just great, great mentoring yeah. and a very, uh, a lot of enthusiasm. San Francisco recovery was, we had over 500 meetings a week and was very jazzed. And my only other question, when you came on to the, this the self, which is yes. tremendous, and I've never heard anybody put it as you did today, uh, about when did you kind of come on to that? When about sixth or seventh year. Uh -huh. Terrific. Yeah. That it was foreign to me. Yeah. Yeah. I was definitely. Self meant, meant a lot to me, you know, in the situation. But I didn't, I hadn't gotten the sense of distance from it by seeing it as foreign until yeah. it happened. And then, uh, then I was speaking at an AA meeting, and I was trying to communicate something, and I used the word parasite. Yeah. And then, from then on, I saw it had an effect. People could uh, relate, so then I used the uh, word parasite a lot. And then more got revealed as it does. But first, it was a distinctly recognition that that which had defeated me is foreign to me. And uh, because a lot of the past is still holding people's balls in, in this present moment. 
So, a, so page 62, so, 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 so. All that stuff, yeah, yes. Yeah, it yeah. became, it just, uh, you know, when it says you're constantly fighting self-imposed crises, mm -hmm. crises. Now, most people thought they were crises they made. But when they read it the way we're presenting it, they see self is imposing the crisis on them. But there's some things in the book I don't agree with, which is because this idea goes back to the old idea. And it says we are the problem and we manufacture our own misery. I don't believe that. I believe we're like a factory and who's ever running the factory is going to direct the products. If self's running the factory, it's probably going to produce misery. But I feel if the higher power is running the factory, it's going to produce awe and gratitude. Yeah. So I believe we're a factory and it's based on who's running it. And there's, in AA, it's only two options. New employer, old employer, lower power, higher power, trusting infinite or trusting finite self. That's it. And so you're either leaning one way or the other, and the program leads, has us leaning to the infinite, which is the relief from the bondage of self. And so you start losing interest in self, and you gain interest in a lot of shit. Yeah. Sometimes the interest hurts you, hurts you because I gain interest in the New York Yankees. And then they got swept almost by Baltimore. So it bothered me. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome, Ed. Yeah. Thank you very much, though. Do we have any books left? There's Anyone books who wants? T shirts? No, the books, the uh, AA books. Really? I don't have any under arrest. All right, well, it's okay. Oh, you have one. Great. Yeah, that's the one. If We're going to send you more, and you can get them for free. I'll send a box when I get home. Yeah, because I wrote, I wrote what we were talking tonight. I didn't write; someone did, and it's in print. And maybe it'll be helpful. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Thank hey, thank you so much. <laughs>